So workflow number seven focuses on shifting from giving feedback on final products to giving feedback during the process. And one of the most exciting moments in my own teaching career actually came from a moment of desperation. In fact, I feel like that's actually, that could be said for almost all the most exciting moments of my teaching career is I was in these moments of desperation when they hit. But I will say I got to a point as a teacher where I was just so overwhelmed by the workflow, like taking papers all over in my life. If I was going to get the car washed, if I was going to a doctor's appointment, I had a briefcase full of papers. Yeah. Like with my red pen, like I'm going to get through some of these. And I realized that I would give feedback, but it always happened on finished products. Kids would write an essay, they would submit work. And then I would just cover that work in comments and suggestions And spoiler alert, at the end of the process, there is absolutely no incentive for students to do anything with all of that feedback. So I spent hours and hours of my life outside of school giving feedback that quite frankly did not help students to improve at all. Because it's not like I would give feedback on the first argumentative essay that we wrote. And then when we got to the second one, several months later, kids didn't go back to the first one. They weren't like, oh, let me check that out and see what Tucker said. So I don't replicate those mistakes that never happened. So I remember saying, I'm done. I'm done taking feedback home. I want to have a life out of school. I'm going to figure out how to pull that process into the classroom. So I was using station rotation frequently, and I often used my teacher-led station for differentiated direct instruction. And I thought, well, if kids are working on a process piece, and that could be a performance task in math, it could be a multimedia project in history, it could be a formal piece of writing in science or English, I was like, they need support, right? They don't do it very well. I'm going to dedicate that teacher-led station to giving them focused, actionable, timely feedback. So I couldn't give them feedback on everything. I would say, hey, at the station, this is the one or two elements I'm focusing on. I would dive in and out of their digital documents or carousel around the table and give them that quick focus feedback. And then I wasn't taking it home anymore. And that was really exciting on a personal level. Mm -hmm. But then the feedback from students was, you know, they would say things like, I've never gotten this much feedback in my life. I feel like I know how to do this well now because of these sessions. So feedback is something that can be so powerful, but it shouldn't be happening in isolation. When we pull feedback into the classroom, it becomes this opportunity for connection, for relationship building, because feedback is how students feel seen and supported in a classroom. So in this chapter, we go into a range of strategies about how do we rethink our approach to feedback. And some of the things that we talk about are first creating a culture of feedback where feedback isn't one way. Teachers spend a lot of time providing feedback to students, but also, you know, we are serving them as learners and we can create a culture where we help them to provide us with feedback about our strategies that we're using for instruction and assessment. And so really first starting to think about how do I create a culture of mastery oriented feedback where we're kind of co-creating a learning environment where we're all committed to this consistent ongoing improvement, including us as educators. We also talk about the importance of peer feedback and how to prepare peers to give each other feedback, of course, through scaffolding like rubrics and modeling. And that's something that we can also support when we're working in small groups. And it really comes down to while students are getting feedback, really asking them to stop and reflect on all of the feedback and how that would change their strategies for learning moving forward. So as you're saying, Kat, and when we get to that next argumentative essay, really going back and saying, you know, read the feedback to yourself, whether you wrote it down or whether you made a short video or whether you made yourself like a cheat sheet of topics and tips. Go back and think about what you did the last time and the feedback that you received from me and the feedback that you received from your peers and your reflection. And let's start there before we lean into this next task. Yeah. And we even highlight the power of leveraging digital tools for feedback because there's some really interesting research to suggest that, you know, video feedback, audio feedback feel more personalized. And as a result, students are more motivated to act on it.